Building your own TTL CPU is a hugely rewarding task, especially if you come from a software background and have advanced programming skills. There's just something about being so close to the silicon. Probably the biggest single decision you have to make is whether to use an existing instruction set or to roll your own. If you go it alone, you can keep things simple, but you lose access to the legacy software. If on the other hand, you decide to go with the 6502 or Z80 instruction set, then you need to implement all of the complex addressing modes. Before you make that decision, I strongly encourage you to watch this video on the next one. The 6502 has 13 addressing modes and we're going to implement all of them. Some are pretty straightforward like accumulator and implied addressing, but some are a bit more tricky like X indexed indirect and indirect Y indexed. It's important to note that the 6502 instruction set is quite orthogonal. This means many different addressing modes apply to many different instructions. An easy way to think about it is we get to choose one from column A, which is part of decode, and one from column B, which is part of execute. Now, this is probably the single most important point of this video. After executing any of the instruction modes in column A, the effective address is always in the EAL and EAH registers. This is why we give these registers direct access to the address bus on the memory. It doesn't matter whether we're doing immediate mode addressing or X indexed indirect addressing, the address is always in EAL and EAH. All of the microcode in column B for every single instruction type will assume that the address is in EAL and EAH. Because of this commonality, it means we need to write the microcode for nine different addressing modes. Then independently, we write the microcode for the 21 different instructions. Now, it should be noted that LDA, LDX, and LDY are almost identical, and we can just copy and paste them. The same is true for the STA and CMP instructions. AND, OR, and XOR are basically the same from the microcontroller's perspective. The only difference is the command we send to the ALU. Instead of writing the microcode for the 115 instructions shown here, we only need to write about 18 different unique routines, some of which we might have to copy and paste a little bit. Once that's done, we just need to write the microcode for these remaining stragglers. Of all these instructions, STA or STORE A is probably the easiest because it doesn't use or change any of the flags. I'm going to start with STA zero page, which is opcode 85, so I thought I'd go over zero page a little before that. Zero page literally refers to the first 256 bytes in main memory from 0000 to 00FF. There are five different addressing modes for zero page, so Chuck Peddle and Bill Minch obviously thought a lot about this zero page addressing. One of the advantages is that instructions only require two bytes versus three bytes for absolute addressing. Three of these modes are very similar to absolute addressing, but with a shorter address range. While the remaining two treat zero page as 128 different address registers. SDA zero page is opcode 85. And to figure out how it works, let's look at this fragment of code. We assume that we've already executed the SED, LDA, and ADC instructions. After that, the program count is at 7AFA, and we see the 85 opcode. At the next address is 52, and we store this in the EAL register. We move 0 into EAH, and then this register pair points to the location 0052 in main memory. This initially contains the value 00. But we take the one zero in our accumulator and transfer it into this memory address. So now, memory address location 0052 contains one zero in hexadecimal. And that's it. Now we have to try and convert this sequence of events into microcode that our machine can execute. First, I'm going to make SAP 6502 cycles recognize all of the SDA instructions. These are opcodes 81. 85, 8D, 91, 95, 99, and 9D. These are all the opcodes for SDA. 
I just need to make sure the cycle count's accurate for each instruction. Comment out all of them except for STA0 page. Then cut and paste this into the switch statement in our program control ROM routine. Now, this is where we generate the microcode for the STA0 page instruction. First, I want to generate the microcode for zero page addressing. I've called the service routine fetch zero page, but actually it's part of decode, and I'll change that later. Next, I call the execute STA service routine. This generates microcode for store A independent of the addressing mode. It assumes that EAL and EAH store the destination address for the store instruction. Let's change program TXS to execute TXS. And now I'm going to copy and paste it and use it as the basis for my STA instruction. Except this time I'm going to broadcast the value of A onto the W bus. Then perform a main memory write. It's always important to remember the dog that's not barking, or the signal that's not asserted in this case. Specifically, PC cells not asserted, so the values in the EA registers will be driving the address bus. This means the write will occur at the address pointed to by the EA registers rather than the program counter. This is exactly what we want for the STA instruction. We assert U counter reset, and this jumps to the next instruction, but I've kind of done this in reverse order. I haven't shown fetch zero page yet. I'm going to need two microcode instructions for fetch zero page. The first one does a main memory read from the address pointed to by the program counter and stores it in the EAL register. This microcode is almost the same as the fetch microcode, except the destination is EAL rather than the instruction register. After fetching the zero page address, we load zero into EAH. The constant value defaults to zero, so I don't actually need to specify the number. I just need to tell it to use the constant register to drive the W bus. I've just inadvertently introduced a bug, which I won't actually see until I try running this on the real hardware. Comment below if you think you know what it is. All right, let's give this a crack and see how it goes. Just fix this minor error. Compiling. And Pac-Man. Excellent. Sometimes I just let it run for a little while to bask in the glory. That's zero page done. Now let's look at STA absolute, which is opcode 8D. Let's have a look at this fragment of code from the Pac-Man game. We see opcode 8D stored at location 7BBC. And what we want to have happen is for the CE at location 7BBD to go into EAL, and the 7B at location 7BBE to go into EAH. This changes the 66 stored at location 7BCE into E3, which was stored in the accumulator. Now, if you hadn't noticed, this is actually self-modifying code. So if we make a mistake here, we'll definitely notice it. The microcode for fetch abs is very similar to the microcode for fetch zero page. In fact, we can just copy and paste it, delete the second line, and make another copy of the first line. But for the second read, we tell the contents to go into EAH. We increment the program counter for each read. Make this instruction active in SAP 6502 cycles. Can I go two for two? Yes. We're making good progress so far. That's zero page and absolute done. Next, I want to work on zero page indexed X. And hopefully I'll just be able to cut and paste this into zero page index Y. Although there is no STA for a zero page Y. Let's step through this example. We see the code for STA zero page X at location 871C with opcode 95. We load the 84 at 871D into the EAL register and we move 0 into the EAH register. Now, so far, this is basically the same as zero page addressing. Here's where the difference comes in. Rather than just use this address, we add the contents of index X, 4F in this case, to the value in EAL and we store the result in EAL. 
No matter what happens with this addition, we always keep the value in EAH as being zero. Even if the result of the addition is greater than 255, we don't increment EAH, we just roll around the value of EAL. With our effective address in the EA registers, we now look up that memory location, which is 00D3 in this case, and we write over the top of the zero that was there with the value 2A that's in the accumulator. We add 95 to the list of opcodes we want to generate microcode for, uncommented in SAP 6502 cycles. I'm going to start by using zero page as the basis for this new addressing mode. But here's the big difference. I need to use the ALU to add the value in EAL to index X. So rather than loading the value from memory directly into EAL, I'm going to load it into the A hold register for the ALU. After that, I copy the value in index X into the B register. This microcode is almost identical to the microcode we wrote for the TXS instruction. Except this time, we don't assert you count a reset because we don't want it in the instruction yet. Hopefully, so far so good. We haven't made any huge changes compared to what we've done before, but that's about to change. We need to instruct the ALU to perform a binary addition with no carry in. We want the output from the ALU to drive the W bus, and we want to load this value into EAL. We instruct the ALU to do an add using binary and not binary coded decimal. And we also tell it to use a carry of zero rather than the value in the carry flag. Because we're not asserting any of the update flag signals, the status register should remain unchanged. Finally, we move zero into EAH. Now we need to write the code in our emulator to do this binary addition. We have a switch statement for the operation. We set the conditions for carry in. This looks at carry 0, carry 1, and the carry bit within the status register itself. Next, we add a case clause for addition, where sum is equal to the A hold register plus the B register plus carry in. The result is just the lower 8 bits of this addition. Later we'll need to add additional clauses for the other ALU operations. Alright, we'll give this a whirl and see how it goes. Now this is pretty good, I'm batting 3 for 3. Let's bask in the glory of working addressing modes. I won't be able to test zero page Y with the store A instruction, but for now, I'm just going to copy the zero page X code, relabel it zero page Y, and use the index Y register instead of the index X register in the addition. I think I'll end it there for this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll go over the remaining four addressing modes in the next video.